most Goldstein has a heart as big as, well, Loxahatchee. It's in Palm Beach County, Florida, where he lives with his beloved menagerie of rescue animals. There's his three-year-old Mustang, Bo, a miniature horse, Abigail, three cats, a pair of alpacas, and a bull mastiff named Marley. Chris works in an office an hour away, but he chose to live in this remote place, largely so he could take care of his furry family. He's always been a big animal rights advocate, working with the Humane Society and other charitable organizations. Chris, Andrew. Andrew, what's up, brother? Pleased to meet you. This is my first time on a ranch, uh, Loxahatchee. I didn't know they had places like this. This is beautiful. Oh, absolutely quiet, peaceful, just the way I like it. It's a large property as well. It was about 10, 15 acres or something. Something like that. It's beautiful. Well, I see animals everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and I can hear them Definitely. as well. So you're obviously an animal lover. Absolutely. Come from a family of animal lovers. Absolutely. Your parents. Yep. Mum and dad. Yep. So what do you what do you have on this on the ranch? Well, I have a bull mastiff. I have two horses and a bunch of cats. Bunch of cats. Yep. And uh, there's a lot of work, obviously, keeping horses. I know it's quite a bit of work involved. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. But it's a, it's a passion. For you. I love doing it. So what do you love about having so many animals around? Well, I grew up with animals my entire life. So the being that I moved out here three years ago with all the extra space, uh, it was, gave me the opportunity to uh, take it to another level. Yeah. Adopt some more animals. You certainly have. A horse is not a, not a well, two horses is not, not the every, every day sort of run of the mill pet to adopt. But I didn't realize you could adopt horses. I never, I never thought about that. I think that's the most amazing thing. They, they just, on a space like this as well, they have so much land to roam around on. It's just like, they gotta be on cloud nine every day. Absolutely, I mean, there's strays of every kind of animal from dogs, cats, even horses, alpacas. Yep. So, you know, being that I had the extra space to take the opportunity to adopt them, just perfect. I hear a lot of knowledge in your voice about animals, so I'm sensing you might also be a volunteer in an animal shelter or something. I, I work with uh, the Humane Society uh, in Broward County, uh, West Palm Beach. Uh, we try and get uh, pet owners to come out and adopt and make it fun as well. Yeah, just educating the general public is so important and uh, raising awareness. Yeah, and to make them think about adopting versus buying a pet. You know, oh, go and adopt. With, give with all the strays, you know, and they're being put down every day with all the kill shelters. Yeah, you know, so it's very important that people understand that you know adopting a pet. Hugely uh, critical. Very important. Yeah. Yes. You know, I know I've had many pets over the years, and I know the difficulty when you lose an animal as well. I don't know if you've experienced anything like that. Uh, unfortunately, I have. Three years ago, I used to live in the city where yep. I didn't have that much space, and I had a beautiful cat uh, named Kimba. Kimba. Who uh, escaped one day, and uh, unfortunately, I never got to see her again. She was hit by a car. Oh, no. So trying not to have that happen. Yeah, that's such a, it's a, it's such a, a horrible feeling, like a sink, you have that sinking feeling when you find out the animal's gone missing, and it's yeah, that it's heart wrenching. The feel. desperation to try and find the animal, so. Um, yeah. Well, we have some technology that I think will be perfect for you. Um, okay. We have a thing called microchipping. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. I've heard of it. But Operation Build is gonna be uh, microchipping Marley, hopefully, for you. Awesome. Um, so that she doesn't go missing again, so. Oh. Guys, tune in after the break. We've got some amazing technology coming up. Microchips provide more secure pet identification because tags can be easily removed. Back at the Goldstein Ranch in Loxahatchee, Florida, it's feeding time. In fact, it's always time to take care of the animals. With two horses, three cats, a pair of alpacas and a bull mastiff, Chris always has plenty of work to do. Of course, part of the day's work is also in the home trying to keep everything smelling fresh with such a large menagerie in residence. And Chris is a big believer in using only environmentally friendly cleaning products. So Chris, I brought another Operation Build team member in. His name is Curtis Bateson, and I think he can help you out with maybe odors around the house from your pets. Okay, well, you know, one of the downsides of having all the pets in my home is obviously the odors. Indoors, outdoors, but what I'm looking for is something that actually works and is non-toxic, and that's very hard. Um, one of the most important things to me is uh, that it's sustainable, it's eco-friendly, and uh, no chemicals. Well, Chris, we've, uh, it, we've, for the past 20 years, we've manufactured a product called Pow Air that actually is made from Mother Nature. So it's a natural product. It's made from 40 essential oils. Um, and when essential oils get a hold of an odor molecule, they actually evaporate it out of the air. So it's very safe to use and will rid your home of any odors that you have. So you, you actually use the technology that, that nature uses to, to, to neutralize odors? That's correct. It's, uh, it's, uh, and it can handle any odor? That's correct. We have a blend of 40 essential oils in our product. So 
one essential oil may get rid of some odors, but we have 40 in our product line. And we've developed that formula um, to get rid of any odors in the air or in surfaces that you may have. One problem I have when I use these different odor uh, is the harsh chemical smell that mm. comes along with it. Well, and that's actually chemicals that's in the product, and it's unfortunate that manufacturers use that type of uh, uh, ingredient in their products, but they haven't found a way to get rid of odors. Um, we've found a way to get rid of odors with a natural product in, in the essential or formula that we make. Do you have to reuse it? Do you have to apply it many times, or is it, is it good for like one application? Or I mean, what, what sort of regimen do you have to go about to keep your keep a house free from odors? Like sure. This? Well, we have many different products. So we have a product that is a continual product, a block and a gel. So we have two products that is con for continual use. Like a slow, slow release. That's correct. And then we have a spray that you would use immediately. Right now, I've got odors. I got to get rid of them. I need to use that. You can use the spray on surfaces as well. And then we have a biological spray that is, has added a, we've added a natural enzyme to it, a high performance enzyme. And that enzyme goes into materials and it's a good bacteria that destroys bad bacteria. So again, a natural source that goes in and destroys all the bacteria and stains and whatnot that cause the odors. I know that Chris's concern has also been, is it, is it you know, non-toxic, so pet friendly? I'm assuming the product is. Absolutely, you can actually spray the product right on an animal if your dog gets skunked or they have a wet dog smell. Um, you can use that on an animal. And it's it'll safe, safe it'll deal with the smell of skunk? Absolutely. That's will. about as tough as it gets. Yeah, stuff <laughs> it really is. really intense. Do so you actually harness the tech, that, like what's been around this for forever? Basically Absolutely. using the, the power of Mother Nature to actually. So actually how does this product work? Well, you can spray it on materials. You can actually release it into the air with a gel or a block that we have, which we'll show you later in some of, the, some of the applications around your home. And you can be rest assured that you're getting a safe product, a natural product. And again, it's mother nature. These are natural sources that we're getting our, our formula made from. Um, and the products actually work. A lot of companies have either added a chemical because they don't understand that there are natural products out there that actually work. So you're not, you're not trying to mask the scent then, you're actually just, it's actually neutralizing it. That's correct. When essential oils are released into the air or into materials, they bond with the odor molecule and actually evaporate it. So we work by way of evaporation. We don't mask the molecule or add molecules to the air. We take the essential oil formula, grabs a hold of the molecule, and then evaporates it. Is that a patented technology that you guys have? It's a proprietary blend that we have. Um, you can take one essential oil and it will work on a number of odors, but we have 40 essential oils in our blend, which will rid any odor um, in, in the air or surfaces that you have. Sounds and, like I could use that. And is it a daily thing, you, you're just as, you, as needed? Um, no, it's a daily thing. There are constant odors and then there's odors that are placed into um, materials and whatnot, urine, feces, skunk, whatever that source is placed into a material. Um, we can take that odor out as well. So Curtis, what's the history behind this product? Absolutely, there's a history. Um, the founder of our company, Shane Lander, uh, was a Vancouver fireman. We're from Canada, Vancouver. Um, that's where we manufacture the product. He was a fireman and he was responsible for um, cleanup. So after a fire, there was cleanup and they had to get rid of the smells and odors in homes and, and industrial applications and whatnot. Um, so they saw these restoration companies and all they had available to them were chemicals, like you said, and it was awful. The chemicals that were going into these homes were actually worse than the smoke itself. Yeah. Um, so they came up with a formula, it actually took them five years to develop this formula to get the smoke molecule. And once they got the smoke molecule, everything else has been a piece of cake for us. We're in industrial applications such as um, garbage plants, food processing facilities, um, sewer treatment plants. So we actually get rid of odors in the air where massive odors and humans have to coexist. So we, they wanted something safe and they found this formula um, and developed it to get the smoke molecule. And now we've been developed into um, other industrial applications and sell our product all over the world. It's funny, actually, I, I was in, involved in a house fire once and my, the, the apartment I had was badly damaged and the, the smoke smell was worse than anything else, worse than the, any of the damage. And the difficulty of getting rid of that smell, I mean, we ended up moving because of it. Um, so the fact that this product's origins are from something as difficult as that to remove that kind of odor and then distilling it down to be able to be used on pet odors. I mean, I'm sure this is an amazing product. Um, so I guess the next thing is actually to actually te put it to the test. Go around the house and put some applications of it around the place. Looking forward to it. Let's do it. Excellent. Excellent.
Here at Operation Build, no mission is too big or too small. I really want to thank Curtis for working with Operation Build here at Chris's Ranch. We got lots more coming up. Whoa. Residues from toxic cleaning products can end up in your pet's skin, coat, eyes, nose, and throat. 